22-year-old Pacers reached the $1.7 million Woodrow Wilson final. Who's so frisky or nasty that he doesn't come to the paddock? There he is, right in front of the stands, though. Force majeure and Bill O'Donnell drives. How about or this maybe one? Stan? nervous, but he has the leading driver at this meeting, Bill O'Donnell, on the bike. And to give you an idea of the quality of this field, although this horse came from ninth to win his elimination last week for this race, no one's talking about him as a major factor here tonight. We'll see whether they're right or whether the horse is right. And now the rest of the field will join this bad actor. Here's Icarus Lobel, who seemed to be perfect in the paddock. 1A in the wagering, coupled with the force majeure, and Hervé Fillion drives Icarus Lobel. And he has the winningest driver in the history of harness racing. Fillion has won over 7,000 races. We'll find out whether Icarus Lobel, like the Greek mythological figure for whom he is named, gets too close to the son of this million, seven million, $1.7 million purse and has his wings of wax <laughs> melt on him. He's a tough horse. Warren Hanover is number two and coming out of the paddock now, as you see. That's Jim Miller, the driver in the blue and gold silks. How about this one? Canadian-owned and driven by Canadian driver Jim Miller, as are so many of the drivers in the sport now. Those horses won six of 12 races, and he is also lightly regarded. So there are some toughies around, and one of them follows him. And here comes the toughie out of the paddock right now. Number three, getting a lot of attention from the crowd. No nukes. And Ben Webster gets big, in the sulky. Big, strong horse. Won his first four races. Impressed everyone who saw him. Looked like a monster. And then ran into Ideal Society and was beaten last week. We'll have to see. He hit a knee last week. He has knee boots on tonight, as you see there in front. And we'll have to see how he performs. And next is number four, Solid Fuel, with Richard Farrington driving. Solid Fuel is regarded by many of the horsemen uh, here as... An outsider that might surprise. He has won six of ten races, but last week he couldn't get within nine lengths of Ideal Society and no nukes. There's no reason to think he's going to bounce back and do it tonight. Now, one of the other bad actors in the field is number five, Elitist. We understand that he uh, is also going to be late to the post parade. Don't know if he's uh, on the track right now or not. I think it's more nervousness, more nervousness than uh, bad acting necessary. The horse just is a little bit tense. And because he is young and hasn't gotten used to the fuss here yet, they've excused him from the parade and let him come directly from the paddock. Now, here's number six, Apollo's Way. And Shelley Goudreau just uh, won a uh, uh, big race here at Monticello with uh, Freedom Fellow and won the consolation here tonight with Merger, the $150,000 consolation, which is a lot of consolation. Goudreau, one of the top drivers in the sport, and this horse could be a sleeper if there is a surprise tonight. He's acting like one. Paul's Burrow, number seven, with the pink saddle cloth, and the driver, Howard Bysinger. This colt is out of one of the toughest race mares of recent years, Tammy Lobel, and on the strength of that fact alone, a lot of people have sentimental attachment to her. However, him, I should say, yet, as yet, he has not shown that he can handle these. Number eight is McKenzie Almahurst, driven by Hall of Famer Bill Houghton. This horse has shown that he can handle these. In fact, he has paced faster than any two-year-old this year. A mile and one minute, 55 and four fifths, right here on the mile track at the Meadowlands. He's a big going colt. He likes the mile track, and he will be heard from tonight at some point in this mile coming up. Number nine is Technical Foul, and Carl Lacause getting ready to hop in the bike, getting some encouragement from... The folks who own Technical Foul, and how about this one? They named this coat for basketball coach Kevin Lockery. And uh, those who know basketball will know why. As yet, Technical Foul has not been thrown out of any races, but uh, as yet, he hasn't been able to master this <laughs> caliber of competition either. Ideal Society is number 10, and the driver is George Schulte. The owner, Barry Epstein of Lexington, Kentucky, named him because he said that that's what everyone dreams of, an ideal society. And Epstein knows of where he speaks for three years ago. He sent Sun Sam out, was second in this race, and then came back and won the Meadowlands pace with Sun Sam. And he's trying tonight again with ideal society, the colt that upset the highly regarded no nukes last week. And, of course, one of the top drivers in the sport in Schulte. Number 11 is Temujin, and Clarence Martin Sr. is the driver. Temujin has not yet been quite the terror for whom he was named, the Genghis Khan, but he is a capable colt. He won by nine lengths two starts back and was second last week to force majeure after being interfered with, so he could be a surprise. And Field and John Simpson, Jr., the drive. Chase McKenzie on the hearth and Icarus Lobel last week and was not able to catch them. Will he be able to tonight? We'll find out shortly. 
Dan, what about a quick word about Elitist, who we did not see? Well, I don't know. He was a winner last week in one of the eliminations, and he is consistent. He has been seven times, first to second, and eight starts, so obviously he commands respect. Gorman, Ed, it's all yours. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. They're behind the gate now, and they're moving. We've got a couple of stragglers back there. Get that one up in the field. That happens to be the stragglers, no nukes, and we've got a false start, so we will have a recall. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. Uh, the crowd got a bit of a reaction when they realized that it was no nukes that caused that first recall, and he's fractious right now. He's not on a sound gate, so this could be a problem for a second recall, and that's what we're going to have, gentlemen. Just a reminder, That's folks, a that we have done. had a delay here with another recall, but we're going to stay right with you, and don't go away. We're going to bring you all the action of the Woodrow Wilson. And the reason he's racing is that he wouldn't get his share of that $1.7 million if he were able to race and do well. It's going to be questionable now whether he will race well in view of the fact that he is acting up and acting up badly behind the starting gate here. We had uh, a similar situation in one of the early closers here at the Meadowlands earlier in the season, and what happened was that the horse went off stride again, or at least one of the, this has happened on actually two occasions, and uh, at that point, uh, of course, the horse was not in it, but in one of the other early closers, I can't remember which one, the horse who was barred from the wagering did actually finish in front, but the mutual payoffs were for the second, third, and fourth horses under the wire. Well, we'll see very shortly whether No Nukes has a problem or doesn't have a problem, whether it is mental or whether he is trying to tell us something in equine language that we can't interpret at this stage, but we'll be able to interpret when we see his actions on the racetrack. In any event, he has called two, caused two recalls here. He and thus has been removed from the wagering, but is allowed to race. So the third time, two recalls, both caused by no nukes, who has been barred from the wagering, but will compete in the contest, but no wagering, and it looks like he's off stride again. But we'll go to the top of the stands, and Ed Gorman with the call of the Woodrow Wilson. Thank you, Dave. Field behind the gate moving up, and no nuke for the third time is on a break. He is barred from the way. The field behind the gate, everyone else on stride and moving nicely now as we're ready for the start of the 1981 Woodrow Wilson. We come to the start. Did it go for the lead? That's Elitist being joined by Lon Todd Hanover up on the outside is Apollo's Way. Quickly through along the rail to join the leaders is Warren Hanover. Those four tightly bunched on the front end. Temujin stays tucked in along the rail, side by side with solid fuel in fourth and fifth. Apollo's Way joins with Paulsboro. Two, three back to McKinsey Almahurst. Then it's Force Major. Down on the rail is Technical Foul. Next, Ideal Society, followed by Icarus Lobel. And last is No Nukes by the quarter and 29. Swing down the back stretch. Up top, that's Lon Todd Hanover by just a length. The leader now comes alongside strongly and is going to go right up to join the leader. Staying with cover is Warren Hanover, third along the rail. Then it's solid fuel, fourth. Here comes McKenzie, wheeling three wide with a rush. Billy Houghton's got him rushing up to go for the leaders. On the outside is McKenzie Almahurst, breezing up to get the lead three wide. 57 4 at the half. They race on to the far turn. McKenzie Almahurst. Now clears a length and gets the top. On the rail is Lon Todd Hanover. Elitist, those two ahead apart for second. As they come off the turn, circling up on the outside. No nukes from dead last. Has wheeled in the fourth and is coming after him. As they swing into the turn, Icarus Lobel also rushes up. On the outside, coming on, Icarus Lobel. Four across the track, they turn home. McKenzie Almahurst owns it by two, two and a half. In second is Lon Todd and making that move. Lon Todd is coming. McKenzie Almahurst hanging on gamely. Lon Todd Hanover trying to wear it down. McKenzie Almahurst. McKenzie Almahurst won't give it up. Lon Todd and now coming on. Warren Hanover on the outside. Lon Todd and McKenzie. Lon Todd and McKenzie. What a finish. 156 one. It could be. The photo's got to separate them. Lon Todd Hanover and Mackenzie Almahurst. The time of the Woodrow Wilson, 156-1. Well, last week was awful hyper uh, behind the gate, and I, I was afraid that I'd had some trouble with him tonight, that he just so riled up and excited, and uh, I'm glad tonight's his last race because uh, give him a year to uh, relax and 
settle down, and, and next year I'll come back with an open bridle, and I think it'll make a difference. He's a great coat, and it's a shame that that had to uh, knock him out of it tonight. Here's the action now as Houghton, Billy Houghton, thunders up with Mackenzie Almahurst and takes this big colt who likes mild tracks. Obviously, he did not seem to like the smaller track. He makes his big move with him and goes after the lead. Benny, how did, what did you think from where you were watching it and your fantastic move? Well, it, I knew I was in desperate trouble. I had to give away uh, much more than a sixteenth of a mile leaving, and I knew I was in desperate trouble from there. And uh, they were getting stopped up a little bit at the three-eighth hole. I hated to come three deep with him there, but I, it was the only shot that I had of maybe getting around to maybe before the five-eighth hole, and I just took a run at it, and I knew my cold had a tire. I stopped him myself when my stopwatch time was 55 and 1. So he, uh, he won a respectable mile, and it was just too bad that he had to be so riled up. And the winner goes more than a respectable mile, a monster mile, as Mackenzie Almahurst hangs on here for his owners, the five guys, and me stable with Bill Houghton, one of the greatest in the sport, the uh, part owner, one of the five of the owners, uh, five guys, Mrs. Hank Thompson, a widow of the former emperor of the Little Brown Jug at Delaware, Ohio, is the me and then five guys, including Phil Tully and uh, Bill Houghton. Let's check the tote board, and we'll see that McKinsey Elmerhurst pays 460, 360, 340. Lon Todd Hanover, 1249, 20, and Warren Hanover was third, paying $17 to show. Can't see the exacta, but it was a 156 and one mile, and that's real good. The exacta paid $83.60 for the 812. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Ed Gorman called the action. I'm Dave Johnson and Stan Bergstein. Post Time USA has been brought to you by Mobile One and Mobile Super. Now, two oils that save you gas. Be sure to check your local cable listings for future telecasts of Post Time USA. This has been a feature presentation of Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated. The announcers on this telecast were selected by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated and approved by the Meadowlands.